everyone, welcome back to the second installment of my 30 books in 30 days reading challenge. It is May the 5th and I have finished book number six for the challenge. So I finished listening on audiobook today to The Joy Luck Club by Amy Tan and this was really good. At first I didn't know if I didn't couldn't figure out what was going on. I hadn't read the back of the book so I didn't really know what the book is about but basically this is almost like a collection of short stories interconnected short stories so this is the story of four chinese women who immigrate to the united states in 1949 and their American daughters, their relationship with their American born da daughters. So you kind of cycle through each of the women and get a little bit more of this story each time um, the cycle moves around. So there's, I think, 16 different chapters in this book, and each chapter tells another part of each of the women's stories. And I, this was really, really great. The only um, qualm I have about this was I think I would have enjoyed it even more if I had read the physical copy. Like I said, I listened to the audiobook and uh, I had a hard time with the audio narration. The um, narrators, I don't know if it was one or more narr narrator. I think it was more than one narrator. I will look that up and put the names on the screen of the audiobook narrators. And um, they used different voices and accents and things like that for the different people in the book. And it just... It didn't always work well for me, so I would say um, give this book a try. Uh, the, the audiobook narration may not be for you, but the story itself is really great. Uh, the way that it explores relationships between mothers and daughters, particu particularly mothers who are immigrants and daughters who are born in the United States, I thought was really well done. There's a lot in here about Chinese mythology, which is very interesting as well. There's a lot of sad parts in here. There's a lot of tragedies that these women have gone through. Um, so yeah, really enjoyed this book and glad that I finally picked this one up. So that's book six down for the challenge and um, hoping that this weekend, this is Friday night, so hoping, hoping that this weekend will allow me to get a bunch more reading done. <music> finished one more book, book number seven for the month. Uh, my name is, pff, I got it upside down. My name is Lucy Barton by Elizabeth Strout. And um, I really loved her book, All of Kittredge and All of Again. So I wanted to try this one and it is a book off my ancient TBR. So that's good to get one more done off that. Um, this is the story of Lucy Barton who is in the hospital with um, quite ill in the hospital for several weeks. Her mother comes to visit her and sits with her in the hospital room and um, they have conversations about people that they knew while Lucy was growing up. And the twist of this is that she and her mother haven't spoken for years. They haven't seen each other in years. And as they're having these discussions and visiting with each other in the hospital room, things start to come out about um, Lucy's dark childhood, like very traumatic childhood. So. It's a really interesting um, exploration of a mother-daughter relationship and um, a dark childhood, you know, a traumatic childhood, and um, how that plays into the rest of your life when you're an adult, into Lucy's marriage, into her writing career and all that. It's quite a, it's a story where nothing really happens other than these conversations, but it, it also is really, um, I don't know, it just was, it was a lovely book to read. It was just very gentle and um, it just, I think it says a lot about human nature. Um, and it made me want to know more about these people, which is good because I believe there's at least three more books in uh, that are sort of related to each other about the people that uh, we meet in My Name is Lucy Barton. In fact, uh, Elizabeth Strout's latest book, O William, is uh, about a character from this book. 
So, um, yeah, I'm glad I have finally read that one off the TBR list. <music> August 8th and I finished two more books. Yesterday I finished two more books. Um, the first one was Field Guide to Ukrainian Sex. I will put the cover up here because I have forgotten the author's name and it's an ebook so I don't have it to look at. Um, and it also put the translator's name up here. This is the first book that I read for Women in Translation Month and I buddy read it with Britta Bowler. Um, and it's a short book. It's only like 150 pages long and it's about this young woman well yeah she's quite young um and she is a writer and she is in an abusive relationship basically and this book is written in very stream of consciousness style and Anna Wallace Johnson talks about this book a, a couple of videos ago in her on her channel and she described it as being a tidal wave of words and I would agree with that it's just just you feel like you're being inundated with words in this book. And while sometimes stream of consciousness works for me, like I love Meltman, I love Ducks Newburyport, you know this. This particular book I found more difficult. I think one of the main reasons I found it more difficult was because there's not as much humor in it. And both Ducks Newburyport and Meltman were quite humorous. The narrator uh, was very um, sarcastic and funny in a sarcastic way, which I always enjoy in a female narrator. Uh, whereas this book, Field Guide to Ukrainian Sex, was just, obviously it deals with a very difficult topic of abuse. And it also deals with the, what it's like to be from Ukraine and to be from a country that's constantly under attack from other countries. And what the legacy of that of that history is and how you respond to that as a, as a culture and as a group of people. And so you've kind of got this metaphor going on between this, this writer woman and her personal abusive relationship and the broader aspect of Ukraine as being the, the abused entity and Russia being the abuser. So I thought that was uh, a really good framing of this particular story but the problem was for me was there wasn't enough story so the themes were good but the story itself like basically didn't all come together the last third of the book I found quite impenetrable uh, and so that really took away from my enjoyment of the book I think that parts of it really shone for me like as I was reading it like there were certain sections or paragraphs or whatever that I was like wow that's amazing writing but as far as like overall did this hang together for me no it didn't it wasn't it wasn't particularly successful for me so that is field guide to Ukrainian sex the next book that I finished was this can't be happening by George Monbot this is green ideas number four from the penguin green ideas series and again this book goes into uh George Mon I'm really having a hard time with his name. Mon Boy is a investigative journalist and a person who writes about uh, climate change campaigns around the world. And so he's really discussing a lot of the same ideas that were in the first two books in the series that I read um, about how capitalism has really created the climate crisis that we're in today. So I... Uh, I marked a page here that I wanted to share with you because I thought it really summarizes what this book is about. It says, capitalism's failures arise from two of its defining elements. The first is perpetual growth. 
Economic growth is the aggregate effect of the quest to accumulate capital and extract profit. Capitalism collapses without growth, yet perpetual growth on a finite planet leads inexorably to env environmental calamity. Calamity. So yeah, this this particular uh, little book was all about how Im continual economic growth is simply incompatible with having a living planet, a living sustainable planet. So I found the ideas that he talked about in this little book to be quite provocative in terms of uh, he's really advocating for a complete change in world, the global economy, and really uh, that capitalism is not sustainable and that we can tweak it around the edges all we want, but that's really not going to make the kind of uh, the kind of long lasting change that we need to make in order to save the planet. So I thought that was very interesting and thought provoking and I'm glad that I read this. So that was book number 9. <laughs> I think I think we're at book number 9. I think I only have I think I will comp try to complete one more book and then stop this vlog. It's August 9th and I've finished book number 10 for the 30 books in 30 days challenge. And that is The Bloody Chamber by Angela Carter, which is a collection of short stories. Actually, they are retold fairy tales, basically. Um, and I've had this on the shelf for a long time. I don't know exactly how long. I picked it up at a library book sale quite a while ago. And so, I, um, yeah, I've had this for a long time. So, I'm glad that I finally got into it. Actually, my daughter read it before I did because she had to read it for a college class. <laughs> So that's kind of funny. Um, this is, as I said, uh, they're fairy tales rewritten, uh, sort of. They're very dark. They are very gory and bloody, and they have a lot of sexual content. So if that is not your jam, then I would avoid this. But I really was entertained by this collection. I don't generally like short story collections. Uh, but of course, some of these, I recognize the fairy tales that they were based on. There was a retelling of Beauty and the Beast. There's a retelling of Little Red Riding Hood, you know, things like that, that I could recognize. Um, and I like sort of the feminist twists on some of these. Um, the first one was like a Pandora's box type of retelling. And, um, I like the feminist twist at the end. Uh, so that was really great that that's the bloody cha the bloody chamber the titular story and it's the very first story in the collection so yeah and this this cover is great i know it's got stickers all over it but i mean that's a fabulous cover so that was fun so i'm really glad that i got to this one so the 10 books that i finished um for this section to just to remind you i finished the joy luck club by amy tan i finished my name is lucy barton by elizabeth strout I finished This Can't Be Happening by George Monboit, by Monboit, which is a Green Ideas number four book. I finished Field Guide to Ukrainian Sex, and I finished The Bloody Chamber. So yeah, this is a good little collection of stuff that I finished this round, um, this vlog. And so I'm going to end this vlog here. I hope you're all doing well and finding some great books to read, and I will talk to you later.